Hello, welcome to From Caracas. I'm Laura Prada. In this opportunity, we'll be talking here in From Caracas with Leonor Fuguet. is also a spokesperson from the eco-socialist movement in Venezuela. She's an activist for Mother Earth Right, but also she's a biologist and a psychologist. Welcome, Leonor, to From Caracas. Thank Pleasure you, to Laura. speak. Today, we'll be sharing with our audience uh, thoughts and your experience working with uh, nature. <laughs> In this occasion, we'll be talking about about Earth Day. When did it uh, become uh, Earth Day? <laughs> How it become Earth Day? Well, let's share a bit of history. It is always important to get people in context. Back mm -hmm. in the 60s and 70s in the United States of America, uh, two things happened which woke up people to several uh, issues. One of them being uh, as a consequence of the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. So the anti-war movement started and the peace movement too. And also there were the trips to the moon by, by the NASA. And so people for the first time saw Earth from space. And that was a way to awaken to the fact that they were living in this beautiful blue gem which was in the center of the universe. So environmental awareness rose to and as a result of that um, motion of people in the streets fighting for so civil rights fighting against racism that was the time of the black panthers mm -hmm. that was the times of martin luther king now so all those fights um, got together with the creation of the environmentalist movement and people started to ask to respect nature too. Mm -hmm. So it was about respect, respect for peace, respect for black people, mm -hmm. respect for life, and respect for nature. So by April the 22nd in 1970, there was a huge parade, a huge um, demonstration in the United States mm -hmm. to, for Earth. So that's how that day, April the 2nd, started to be celebrated as Earth Day. And uh, well, at some point it became uh, a celebration for all the fossils on the planet. But later on, United Nations recognized uh -huh. that day globally as Earth Day. Uh -huh. But eventually <laughs> it, it evolved, it became Mother Earth Day. How that happened? Yes, because once the United Nations decided to keep on celebrating every April the 22nd, Earth Day, mm -hmm. it happens that on Earth Day, back in 2010, President Evo Morales went over the General Assembly to give the speech on Earth Day. And Evo comes from Bolivia, and Bolivia is so close to the traditions of Earth as a mother. So he proposed to the General Assembly that from that day on, instead of celebrating just Earth Day, we, all the world, started celebrating Mother Earth Day, and everybody said yes to that. So from that day on, mm -hmm. the UN recognizes Earth as mother. And uh, in recognizing her as a mother, it is also recognizing her as a living being and as a subject of rights. So that was a really very important turning point. But what is that relationship between, I don't know, Evo Morales and Mother Earth, Bolivia, Mother Earth, uh -huh. and culture in Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, that relationship? You see, as, as many people with the Western culture rediscover Earth when they saw her in those pictures taken by the astronauts, mm -hmm. well, it turns out that all our ancestors, all originary peoples from the very beginning of life and culture on Earth have seen her as that, as a beautiful living being, and see her as a mother. All the names in all languages, from all native nations and ancient traditions, to call her mean mother. So what Evo did mm -hmm. is that since Evo comes from Bolivia, who has these traditions of Buen Vivir, uh, Suma Camaña, and uh, it is related to the respect and harmony with Pachamama, being Pachamama the way to say Mother Earth for them, 
what he brings again something which is not uh, in the past, but because it's ancient. He just brings back into present something which can help us uh, be able to keep living on the future. Because looking at her as a living being changes everything. And looking at her as a mother too. And remembering that she's sacred territory too. So he brought back, in not only in the memory of the peoples, but into the loss of, uh, of the planet from that moment on, the fact that we have to respect her because she deserves the same respect mm. any living being deserves and that we depend on her to keep, keep giving birth to life which is what has allowed ancient cultures to keep on living with respect and in harmony and not predating or exploiting her but respecting and honoring her. Is that the kind of relationship that uh, moved progressive movements in the region in the last years to become more aware of the need to protect her, to, to maintain her as living as it's been, not only now because in the mm -hmm. last years we have kind of um, uh, suffocated her yeah. in, a, in, a, in a sense. But is that conscience, that need to create social conscience that we must protect her, that we must uh, keep her safe so we can uh, keep having um, its help for rain, for food, mm -hmm. is that the kind of social awareness? Well, uh, mm, social movements and progressive movements all over the world, mm -hmm. I think we have always had this consciousness, but we needed something like a formal uh, something which allowed us to give another step, to take new steps, such as uh, asking our institutions our, and our governments to act upon that um, need that we have felt all the time. Consciousness is arising, but many governments still do not represent the, that level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. We are still involved in looking at uh, the earth as a um, non-living deposit of resources um, like to, to be exploited in order to satisfy economic uh, human needs and also as a means for geopolitical uh, relationship or, or control relationships. So for us, social movements, to have EVO, um, getting the UN to recognize that the earth is a mother and is alive and then is a subject of rights as human beings are allowed us these recent years to develop several documents and also to give several important mm -hmm. uh, legal uh, steps in our constitutions or laws and at this moment as a matter of fact as there is an universal declaration of rights mm -hmm. of human rights mm -hmm. there is also a, a universal declaration of mother earth rights presented to the UN and in uh, Mother's Day, uh, uh, Day on April the tw uh, 2010 social movements went we went to Cochabamba Bolivia I was going to ask you uh, <laughs> exactly uh -huh. because after that uh, social movements met yeah. in, in Bolivia in Cochabamba on a summit to to talk about Mother yeah. Earth right Evo what happened again. what <laughs> Evo, Evo Evo again. again what happened uh -huh. there what 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 were the results that you arrived with which to which um, points you arrived which ideas so uh, you, you had it in that moment Evo invited us on December the 29th mm -hmm. after he got the UN to recognize Earth as a mother mm -hmm. we uh, Chavez and Evo met together in Copenhagen in the climate summit mm -hmm. and Commander Chavez said, you remember when he said that slogan, the environmentalists were screaming, yelling in the streets, system change, not climate change. Mm -hmm. So after Chavez talked and said that, it, it came Evo's turn. And he said, well, since the governments are not taking the decisions which should be taken here in the summit, I invite all the social movements to go to, Co to, go to Cochabamba on Mother Earth Day next year in order to do it. 
So we went there, Commander Chavez supported us. He sent all Venezuelan revolution social movements in a, in a plane, and we met there in Cochabamba with social movements from all over the planet. And at the end of that summit, we had a very important document, which is known as the People's um, Summit Document for the Rights of Mother Earth, which was presented to Evo and Chavez in, at the end, at the, at the closure of the Cochabamba summit. So from that moment on, social movements all over the planet, we have, we have two documents, the UN Declaration, Universal Declaration of Rights, mm -hmm. and also the Cochabamba document, mm -hmm. which was written by all of us. Evo, on December of that year, mm -hmm. in 2010, got all, the, all that information and created the first constitutional law for the rights of Mother Earth. So that became the first like constitutional document where she was recognized as, as mother. mother. Uh -huh. But um, talking about constitutional law, how this idea got into constitutional law, recently mm -hmm. President Maduro said, uh, I compromise myself with all environmental and ecologist movements to deliver to the National Constituent Assembly this project, I want you to explain <laughs> me which project, so they can shake it so Venezuela has its constitutional law for protection of Mother Earth this year, 2019. Please explain to us, to our audience, uh, which is that uh, project he referred. What yeah. he's, we was talking about when since, he said these words. Since Mother Earth is just one, and we are all daughters and sons of Mother Earth, and we in Venezuela, the eco-social activists, we are involved in all worldwide fights to protect her. We have been taking part on this history I have been telling you about, and of course, we decided that we also wanted to have our own law to protect Earth as a mother. And since, thanks to President Maduro, we have our constituent national assembly, mm -hmm. we said this is the perfect opportunity. So this mm, recent Monday, April the 22nd, in this 2019, we presented him mm -hmm. in Miraflores, in, the ha in our house of, gov of government, with a project, a constitutional law for the rights of Mother that Earth. That was on 2019, on this year, yes. uh, Mother Earth Day. Yes, uh -huh. so, and of course, this project is not a project we did on our own, apart from all those uh, fights, because we are part of that. So this project uh, has the spirit of the UN Declaration of Rights, mm -hmm. has the spirit of the Cochabamba document, has also a lot of the structure, this constitutional law from Bolivia, from the rights of Mother Earth has. We also took into account other experiences, such as the constitution of Ecuador, who uh, on 2008, they wrote a new constitution and they included a chapter with the rights of nature mm -hmm. or Pachamama. And we also took into account the constitutions of uh, Guerrero and the DF in Mexico mm -hmm. who have their state constitutions and they also have some articles on rights for nature. So we took all that and of course we added up um, thoughts and ideas we have as Venezuelans because we have our own reality. And as a matter of fact, one of the beautiful things I like about this project is that it doesn't say the government has these duties and the people has these duties. That, that's no. separation of roles. No, okay. because we framed our project of law taking into account our constitution. And mm -hmm. our constitution says we are just one people, and people, uh, we don't have a representative democracy, but a democracy which empowers us and give us um, like, a, like a star role mm -hmm. model, particip participating directly. So this law calls all the people from the different places E either in government or social movements or whatever, mm -hmm. but it calls us together. It doesn't separate government and people. So I they think go hand by hand, uh, hand by hand, and working together. The same way we handed the law. How, to how the president. Who, who were the pe the persons who handed in 
to the president of law. That was that was you know a beautiful uh, venue. Mm -hmm. It was shown broadcasted all over the country live, and we had you know at here I had like um like this is a draft version. We I want I want you to explain me what okay. what stuff did you have in your hand <laughs> later on later on. <laughs> okay, we we handed him the project, but the beautiful thing is that it was not one person. He was standing there, and there was one boy, elementary school student, taking it, and a young activist holding it, and a forest firefighter taking it, and a national parks guardian also, and our elder native activist who is also part of the National uh, and mm -hmm. Constituent Assembly, and me as a woman and as an elder woman activist. So we all, at the same time, handed the project to the president who was also with our minister of eco-socialism, who is an activist, he's a young activist. So in that moment, we could say that is the eco-socialist Venezuelan Bolivarian revolution happening because all generations and all dimensions of people mm -hmm. from government and from social movements working together for one same cause handed him, who is a president of the people, the project, and he said yes. So that, that was a really beautiful um, demonstration of a real eco-socialist revolution of the people happening live in the middle of a war. Because that, I think, also has to be said. That Why? Why? What does it have to be said that well, because it's the Venezuela is in the middle of, the, uh -huh. of, the middle of a war? Well, because at, the, at this moment, we are coping with very severe, uh, severe attacks from the U.S. government. We are under psychological attacks, economical attacks, financial attacks. We have even been the subjects of the first time ever in the world of uh, electromagnetic attacks, which stop the electricity um, nationally. Uh, national well, wide. Yeah. So what I want to say, what I mean is that we are, we feel protecting Mother Earth is so important that even if we don't have cell phones working because they are sabotage. I mean, sometimes you don't have elevators and you have to climb 20 floors yeah. and you don't have air conditioning and you cannot call the other environmentalists to come. In spite of everything, even if you have to make a line to have some wa water, mm -hmm. get some water for your house, no matter all that, with all that, we decided this mother or they we would present that project and i think that's daring because we did it against the odds but we are really committed in the eco-socialist bolivarian revolution to walk or talk and in order to really say we are eco-socialists we have to prove it to mother earth first place and so we gave her as a present in her day a project to defend her rights which, which are some of the topics that uh, you presented in that proposal? Okay, I have the draft here. That's <laughs> all. <laughs> That's the draft. Okay. That's the dra yeah, this is a draft. And of course, this is the draft of the project. We handed the project, project. to the president. And this is the one the president handed mm -hmm. to, to the, the Constituent National, National Assembly mm -hmm. and asked them to please have Advise it approved it. by this year. So this year we're going to have a uh, Mother Earth uh, with her rights. Um, there are very important principles such as harmony. Human activities must be done respecting harmony of Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. Any human activity should take her out of her equilibrium systems. Um, there is also the proposal that instead of ha making decisions in an anthropocentric uh, way that is thinking of the on behalf of the well-being of human beings we have to do it biocentrally that means focusing on the the wealth of life mm -hmm. and all our government and people all decisions have to be uh, depend on her at first but not on us interaction and, and her superior interest maybe this is very interesting 
when we wrote this project, mm -hmm. we also took into account Venezuelan legislation because I already That's told important. you about the international uh, legislation we consider. But it turns out that by December 2015, the Venezuelan Revolution mm -hmm. approved the most revolutionary uh, law of seeds. It forbids completely NGOs, it forbids completely patents, it's a very, very, it's against all the, um, I don't know how to, the green, green industry mm -hmm. approach to appropriate of the seeds, and it gives the seed back to the people. In that law, already Earth is called mother for the first time. So we already have some previous experiences. Okay, Leonor, uh -huh. we are running out of time. Oh my God. We have <laughs> three minutes. Uh -huh. But before we end, I want to ask you one last question. Okay. Because also um, uh, quoting President Nicolás Maduro on that day on 22nd, on April 22nd, when you handed in the law. On that day, he also said that over the last 200 years, capitalism has demolished basic balance in the planet and we are living today in a global climate change. Regarding this, please explain to us the need of protecting national parks like the case of Parcaura. Hmm. Well, actually, uh, almost like a, a month before Mother's Earth Day, mm -hmm. we celebrated the second year after President Maduro approved the creation of National Park Caura. And this is the largest tropical forest national park in the whole world. Mm -hmm. And I want to um, honor this coherence between uh, his talk mm -hmm. and his work for the president. Because the pres we were, the, the we, the activists, were the ones who handed him the proposal to create Caura National Park. Mm -hmm. And he could have said no, but he said yes. Even in the, in the middle of this geopolitical situation where oil prices went down mm -hmm. and where other kind of resources can be very helpful to cope with this situation, mm -hmm. he decided to leave all the oil and gold and coltan, which is underneath the surface of the 8% of Venezuelan territory, which is the size of this park, they decided that it's going to be left there forever and ever. And I think that's another proof that our president, Maduro, and our eco-socialist uh, institutions mm -hmm. and movements are committed both to respect Chavez's ideas mm -hmm. Very regarding eco-socialism, which he left to us in our Plan de la Patria, or country's plan, mm -hmm. where he calls us to protect life on the planet and to m prevent the human species from becoming extinct. And then President Maduro turned that into a law. So what we are doing is really going uh, through this confrontation of needing those resources, but understanding that most important of all is to protect Earth, to protect life, and to protect her for life to keep going forever, on and on. Thank you very much, Leonor. Well, this has been the talk with Leonor Fouguet, who is an activist, who is a spoker of a spokeswoman of the um, uh, movement here, uh, the eco-socialist movement here in Venezuela, but who also is a biologist, a psychologist, and very strong believer of the Mother Earth rights. So once again, Leonor, thank you very much for meeting us. Gracias a ti. Thanks. Thanks to Tennessee. You're welcome.